Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art trip, and I teach beginners how to paint acrylic. Now, this video is for the person who's brand new to acrylic painting, doesn't know anything about it, and needs all the first introduction stuff. So these are the techniques, terms, and basics that you got to know about acrylic painting to start painting today. I highly recommend if you can give me a few minutes of your time, you watch this video, I'm going to make your painting experience easier. So the first thing I'd like to show you is the basics of acrylic paint. If you've been looking for a video that doesn't expect you to know anything about acrylic and explains all the nuts and bolts, this one is it. You don't have to remember anything about painting at all for this to be able to help you. Acrylic paint is an acrylic polymer that has pigment or color in that emulsion, suspended in that emulsion. It comes in three thicknesses. It comes in heavy bodied, which is the kind of paint we mostly think of on canvases. And that paint holds its shape and doesn't level even as it dries. It also comes in something that is referred to as soft bodied, this is a little more self-leveling. And while this is a nice bottle of professional paint, you'll notice that it mostly often comes in bottles like the kind you see in craft paint. The other thickness that it comes in is fluid or high flow. There we go. And you can see that they're all very different, but where it becomes super noticeable is if we tip the surface. So what you wanna know about this is whether it's heavy bodied, whether it's fluid or whether it's high flow, the amount of pigment in the emulsion is the same. The difference between the paints is the type of thickness of emulsion and that's it. The other thing to know about acrylic paint is it comes in different grades. They're called tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier three is what is referred to as a professional paint. A heavy, like this is a nice heavy body professional paint. A tier one or student paint or craft paint right here won't necessarily have tier one on it, but here's an easy way to tell. Professional paints will have different prices depending on the color and student paints will be all one price. Another difference between the paints is the amount of pigment that is in the paint. So if we take this heavy body professional paint and we come across our red here, you're gonna see that this coverage is pretty good. It's pretty high, right? You still see a little bit underneath, but it's good. When we come over it with student paint, you're gonna notice that a lot more of the red might show through. The other difference is, is student paints can dull and darken easier and may not have the saturation of color that you see in professional paints, but they're much more economical. As a student, you get to decide what is the right choice for you. I say buy the best paint that doesn't stress your pocketbook. Now, another thing to know about acrylic paint is that it's not all opaque and it's not all transparent. That information is generally on a tube of paint. On this tube of paint, it's on the back. On this tube of paint, it's on the front. Just always read your tube of paint. There's a lot of extra information there. You can figure it out the first day and it will help you. When the paint is transparent, you can see what's going on underneath it. And when the paint is very opaque, like this black paint, it covers totally. So opaque versus transparent, those are things to know about. And that doesn't matter whether you're painting professional or heavy body. Other thing to know is that when you're coming here, right, we're gonna glaze. So we talked about it being transparent. One way to think about that is glazing. So if I take this pink and I go over these lines, you can see the colors underneath making a third color. If I come over with blue, you can still see colors underneath, but there's more opacity to that. And if you come back over with this yellow, there is color still showing underneath. That's glazing. That's just something that you've got to do when you're painting. Another thing that you might have to know as a beginner is the types of brush strokes and how to control it. So I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to get it in water. This is around. I'm going to drag off the extra and I'm going to load. The way you correctly load a brush is to come to the edge of the paint, pull it out, flip it, and pull it out. You don't want to have too much water or too little water in the brush. When you're trying to make fine lines with any brush, 
All you want to do is keep your pressure light and not push down hard on the brush. When you're trying to make thick lines, you would push more. That is how you control your brush. To tell if your brush is correctly loaded, you're going to dip your brush in water, come into the load that I showed you, and then you simply stroke out like this. What you're looking for is how long your brush can go before you have to reload the paint. And it should be able to go a fair distance if you did that correctly. If you added too much water, it's not going to cover very well. And if you added too little, it's going to do a thing called dry brushing, which I'll teach you in a second. One thing that really throws off people new to acrylic paint because they're familiar with oil paint is that acrylic paint doesn't blend when it's dry and it dries really quickly. So these are two dry colors of paint. I've got a wet brush here. And even if I brush over it, they're not going to blend together. So if you're familiar with oil paint but hadn't used acrylics, that might throw you off. To blend acrylics, the two colors will need to still be wet and movable. So I'm going to put down some yellow, and I'll go ahead and grab some blue. And we're going to come here and blend these two together. Notice that I'm brushing up and down to create the transition. If I go across my brush stroke, I lose all my work entirely. So remember to go within the direction of the stroke. You may also want to practice curving lines. I see this throw students off all the time. I'm going to get a little bit of blue and yellow. So go on your toe of any brush you have. If it's a square shaped brush, if it's a round brush, you want to just practice making lots of curves and strokes and wiggles on your brush and get familiar with the types of shapes that they'll make on every brush that you have. So when you go to paint with it, you're not struggling in the moment. Another thing that I wanna show you is something called dry brushing. I love dry brushing. Dry brushing is when you have a stiff brush that has very little or no water on it. And you're gonna come and get some paint and you brush very lightly. And the thing that you'll notice is, is that the surface underneath and the texture of the surface really, really will show. Even if you get another color, that'll remain true. You don't want to press very hard. You don't want to push in with your brush. And you don't want to use too soft of a brush to try to do that technique. There's some terms you're going to hear all the time that you may not be familiar with. And the first one is thoroughly mixed. You'll hear people say, thoroughly mix your color. And what they're saying is that you're going to make a third color from two colors where you mix them both together so that the separate colors make a whole new color that is uniform. After that, you might hear a term called loosely mixed. Loosely mixed means that I don't incorporate the colors very thoroughly, but instead allow them to incorporate on the canvas. This is often very marbled. You can really see all the streaks and colors. I'll get some blue and white loosely mixed. And you can really see each individual color, even as it mixes new colors on the canvas. That's what they're talking about when you hear loosely mixed. Just in case it's been a minute since you've painted, we're going to talk about a term that's really important. Primary colors, red, yellow, blue, right? So you've got your blue, you've got a red, and you've got a yellow. Let's put those out. And if you remember from kindergarten grade school, and you may not because it might not have been that important in your life, primary colors are supposed to make something called secondary colors, which Sometimes they do and sometimes they don't because this is pigment and pigment isn't light and pigment doesn't always make the color you expect. So sometimes when you take red and blue together, you don't get purple, which is what you might expect from that. You actually get a gray. So don't be surprised if that happens. You just need a different red or a different blue and it's always good to experiment with your paints. Now I've got a magenta and an ultramarine over here, and I very easily make the secondary color purple, right? Now, just in case you don't remember, we're gonna cover the other two secondaries, which is blue and yellow make green. 
Sometimes if you have certain colors, you might not get a bright green or a color you expect there either. So always test to make sure that your primaries are giving you secondaries. I'm mentioning this to you because sometimes paint companies sell primary kits and those primary kits won't always make secondaries the way that you would expect. So this way it doesn't catch you by surprise. Another thing that you're going to hear is value. That's how light or dark something is. So one value is white, right? And another value is, let's see if we can get some black on my dirty brush here, black. And then between those two values, right, is a middle gray. Well, there's also a series of shades or values in between. Uh, we do them up to a scale of 10. And what that is, is it's called the gray scale. Even color has value, and that is a very important thing in painting because how light or dark something is sometimes is what gives it its shape. You will also hear terms like tint tone shade. Tint tone shade is very important because if you tint something, it just means that you added white to it. But if you tone something, it means that you added gray to it. And if you shade something, it means that you've added black to it. So those are just the basic things that you might need to know if you're just starting out painting for the first time. This will really help you in the art store. It will really help you when you're doing classes or following along with step-by-step -step books because these are the basic first concepts that you as a new acrylic painter need to know. Now I want to tell you, you absolutely can do this painting thing. It is a lot of fun and practice does pay off with painting. Be good to yourself, be good to each other. And I want to see you at the next Art Sherpa Tip video. Bye-bye.